this session. We're blessed and privileged to have uh, a very good friend of mine, someone that I've known for many, many years. We've had the privilege of uh, doing ministry together uh, and also sharing a lot of private moments together, uh, a private journey I've seen many years of just building on what God is doing in our lives. Today, we celebrate the goodness of God in his life uh, as a man of prayer uh, and uh, uh, leading the prayer revival around our nation and around the world uh, with the next level uh, prayers. Uh, is also a strong teacher of God's word. Uh, he's not just a teacher, he also practices what he teaches. I've seen him grow because I've had the privilege of knowing him uh, in his, I mean, we were all <laughs> young when we got to meet, but I, I, I've had the privilege of seeing God just uh, raising him, giving him wisdom, and growing him into someone that we can call a voice for God in this generation. Uh, we're going to take a video introduction, and afterwards, you're going to receive the, the ministry of uh, the senior pastor, Alistair's International Christian Center, and the convener of Next Level Prayer Gatherings, uh, Pastor Bolaji Idowu. Praise God. All right, multimedia, let's, let's, let's roll it. Attention all passengers, brace yourselves for an electrifying journey as we soar through the skies at supersonic speeds. Our next speaker is ready to elevate us to unprecedented heights of inspiration and excitement. He's a dynamic speaker, mentor, and transformational coach with a mission to change lives and guide people towards the life God intended for them. He firmly believes in the power of the Word of God and is dedicated to establishing thriving churches in major cities, providing hope, connecting people to God, and inspiring complete devotion to Christ. He is the global lead pastor of Harvesters International Christian Center, a vibrant church with locations spread across Lagos, Abuja, Ibadan, and even London. He is also the founder of the Harvesters Africa Empowerment Foundation, a trailblazing organization offering humanitarian aid through direct social and financial support to those in need. In addition, he leads Next Level Prayers, a virtual prayer community that brings together hundreds of thousands in prayer, resulting in over 1,000 testimonies each month. Alongside his loving wife, Omomi, and their three wonderful sons, he exemplifies inspiration, leadership, and philanthropy, lighting the way for everyone fortunate enough to witness his remarkable journey. With a resounding applause, please welcome Pastor Bolaji Ito. Praise the Lord. I'm sure you can do better than that. Praise God. Hallelujah. Just before we have our seat, you're going to stand for about five minutes just to let you know ahead of time. I want to look towards my left, which will be your right, and look to Pastor Godman and Pastor Bola and just say, we love you. Yeah. You know, um, without trying to patronize them, it's good to know that I've known them for 20-something years. Yeah, it can't be less than 25. It's something about, about, it can't be less than 20 years, between 20 and 25 years, you know. And when my father died about 20 years ago, Pastor Godman was there at the funeral. You know, I'm just telling you, you know, that how long. When my mother died 15 years ago, he was there, <laughs> you know. So, you know, at my wedding, maybe 16 or 17 years ago, he was there, you know. So, before anything, Pastor Godman, thank you. And, and it's a personal thank you from me, you know. And, and, and when I say that, I say it with all sense of, because sometimes you need to know this, and this I've not said publicly. But Pastor Godman introduced me to Reverend Sam. Yeah. He might not even remember. I'm not sure if he remembers this. You know, it was in um, Kudirat, some 70 Abiola, I don't know, something, something way. His office, it was Shane office with Pastor Ayo Daniel and, you know, all those people, you know, and all of those, you know, and, and it's nice. It's just, you know, lovely. So, 
Pastor Godman, firstly, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. And to the most secured pastor's wife I've ever met, Pastor Bola. <laughs> I'm telling you, she doesn't struggle for her space. She believes what she believes. If you want to go on the journey yourself, go on your journey. <laughs> you know, you know and, and she's just so graceful. And she's very graceful with it. She's very graceful with it. You know, she's, she, you know sometimes we're out, we're talking. If Pastor Bola wants to talk, she's going to talk. He doesn't feel like talking. I don't feel like talking. She just, she doesn't, there's no pressure. She just, she, you know, just who she is. And there's no reason why you will not fall in love with her. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. And Pastor Devo, that I'm getting to know more and more, that works like an engine room. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Very hardworking, Pastor Devo. Pastor T, I, I met Pastor T, I'm not sure, I think I met Pastor T in Futa. I think, yes, I think maybe I came back with Pastor Godman one time and you were there. And that was when I met Pastor T. And we've had this ever-growing journey that is becoming deeper and deeper and deeper. And something about Pastor T is that he's a Christian. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah, Pastor T is a Christian. Is a Christian. Some pastors are not Christians. Yeah, it's a profession. Well, Pastor T is a Christian. He's a Christian. He, he loves the Lord. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 17, as we keep standing. Yeah, as we keep standing. You know, in our church, we have two prayer postures. Stand or kneel. Not here, in our church. So if you take another posture, someone will come and tell you that you have a wrong posture. When it's corporate prayer. Except there's a reason why you have to sit. Some people have things why they have to sit. First Corinthians 14, 17. Um, let's read from verse 16. Verse 16. Verse 16 says this. Okay, here. It says, Otherwise, if you're blessed with the Spirit, how will he that occupy that occupies the place of the uninformed. No, no. Oh, this new King James. Sorry. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. I'm a child of King James. So it was getting confused. But now I can adjust in my mind. Okay. Otherwise, so he was talking about speaking in tongues. It says, Else when you're blessed with the Spirit, which is speaking in tongues, how shall he that occupied the room of the unlearned say, Amen, at the giving of thanks, seeing that he understandeth not what you say. It says when you're speaking in tongues, how does a person say amen? You don't understand what you say. Look at verse 17, but that's what my focus is. My focus is this. It says, for verily, he giveth thanks well. Watch what it says. It says when you speak in tongues, you give thanks. Not just give thanks, you give thanks well. Someone can cook food and cook and cook well. He says he gives thanks well, but the other is not edified. He says he gives thanks well. So when you speak in tongues, you give thanks well. So it's good to pray in English. And we should pray in English. But let's take it to the next level. And more than speaking in tongues, of course, Pastor Goma is a staunch Bible teacher. Is this. We edify ourselves. And for the next three minutes, just three minutes... You're going to lift up your two hands towards heaven and pray in the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. I, I need a little more volume on the monitors. Vrende kosi ala brante kas kosh katale bronska bronta li bronza nzanda kalia vali tongs ke pos ke para tila bora tala bako ramanda kis seladina bronte kesko bronga tolo man brande kas katala badua ila bronte karis kosh ka bronta li bronta kara badbandia le bronske 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 brante pailo kona ex ti kas tojen topolo barandia ekele suste bronte kila rake ponta brante kolo ruamana kantia ex ti konja pombra maman posa i bronte ke bronte pom Bram bam bom bandia, he bronte 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 bramba bambale, 
Ebronte kere bombo bombo ne Iksti grando kaka Aksti koskas ke skopa Aksti koskas ke Eksodiala Enina brando kasko Sile breke tomba Eli kruski pa Eli krustate Imantoka Aksti koska Ebora mananske Sile bento Epantikose Ekore popopopontea Aksti kosa vai Ikirimon ponda Eriku paraktosa Eri Christus, e Cristo vale, e sti ronda la pras, orando cale, e riando casco, e sti veina, vane, sixto paladi, e sti son pa, e comba la dia, pasco vele, e sti camanante, scella poca baha. In Jesus' name we pray. Jeremiah chapter 1 in verse 12. Oh. And that's how the anointing warms up. For his glory is here. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12. Let's jump. Verse 12. Let's just together want to go. Then said the Lord unto me. Just one prayer in this conference. It says, thou hast well seen. The same thing, that well. Maybe you've been praying about your business. It's time to see well. Lord, help me hear well. I don't want to hear blah, 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 blah. Help me see well. What you're trying to say to me. Help me hear what? Well. Help me what? See well. Let's go ahead and pray, everybody. Help me hear well. Help me see well. Help me hear well. Help me see well. Help me hear well. The next step to take. The next strategic move. Help me hear well. Help me see well. Help me hear well. Help me see well. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus name we pray heavenly father once again we are thankful we thank you for your love we thank you for your grace we thank you for the finished work of christ on the cross of calvary and what we have through the perfect work of christ on the cross today we come in the fullness of that finished work and we have come to receive in all of the things you've had in store for us I pray as the word of God is being thought today that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, God will be edified. God will be built. A revival will break out. I pray that outcomes will be changed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for the supply of the spirit of Jesus. We thank you for the anointing that destroys the yoke. We thank you for the manifestation of your power and glory. Do as you will, spirit of the living God. Move down every aisle and every road. Touch those online in all the other centers. Let burdens be lifted and yoke be destroyed. Let us, let us attend the conference. Let us become the experience of the conference. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we give you praise and glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Look at your name and say, you already look more anointed. You can have your beautiful seats. Amen. Glory to God. This morning I will be sharing about changing outcomes through prayer. Changing outcomes through prayer. Pastor Godman called me and I said, what is the Spirit of God putting in your mind for the conference? He said, for your session, let us be revival. I said, okay, that's good. Changing outcomes through prayer. In the evening, I will speak about turning delays to deliveries. Praise God. Changing outcomes to prayer. Where do we start from? I'll read three scriptures and we'll build from there. John chapter 16 in verse 23. John chapter 16 in verse 23. The Bible says that in that day ye ask me nothing. It says in that day ye ask me nothing. 
Verily, verily, I say unto you that whosoever, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give unto you. Verse 24, hitherto you have asked nothing in my name. Now, when he talks about the name, let me just stop for a moment. The name, because when we say, when he says, ask in my name, the name is not J-E-S-U-S. When he say ask in my name, the name is a metaphor. And that's something you must understand. That scriptures are full of metaphors. The name is a metaphor talking about his authority. For example, if I write you a check and you go to the bank, when you present the check to the teller, you are not presenting the check based on your own balance. The check authorizes you to be able to withdraw from what? From my own account. So when he says pray in my name, he's saying when you come in my authority. This is why people call the names of Jesus and the demon keep choking them. This is why people call the name of Jesus and they keep stumbling. The reason why is that they conventionally think that the authority is in the mention of the name. The authority is not in the mention of the name. The authority is in the person. And the way authority works is this. Authority works with knowledge. So it's not about mentioning the name of Jesus. It's about knowing what you have in the name of Jesus and you are able to exercise it. Glory to God. So when he says in my name, it's not about, it's not in the literal name. He says in my authority. I'll give an example. If I say I came here in the name of um, Bill, um, in, in the name of President Bola Ahmed Tinumbu, I didn't come in his name. I came in his office, whatever it is. That's what it is. And the reason I'm saying so is that, you know, let me give you a good story. When I was in college, secondary school, when I was in secondary school, I, I don't know if you went to a boarding house, but if you did, you'll have heard about Lady Koi Koi, Centaur, those kind of things. So I was the pastor. I was the coordinator for my set. And we're in year two, and they said that this demon used to come to the hostel to press them. And I told the Christian, why not rebuke him? And they say, we will just say, Jesus, 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 Jesus. And the thing will never go. And it will literally oppress them. And you know what I did? I said, they complained for like three weeks. I took my bed and I said, you know, one day I will come and sleep. And the day I came to sleep, the demon did not come. I said, nothing is coming here. Maybe it's in your mind. And we laughed over it. But looking back, why didn't the name work in the mouth of those Christians? Because they thought the power was in the name. They did not know the authority. They did not know the authority. For example, you can give someone a check. He doesn't know what you've given him. The check is Jesus to him. So you can know the name of Jesus, but if you don't know the authority that backs up the name of Jesus, it's still useless to you. And the man that does not know and the man that does not have have the same lot. Did you hear that? The man that does not know and the man that does not have, they have the same lot. The reason why is that you can't take advantage of what you do not know. Read the Acts of the Apostles. Sometimes the apostles did the miracle without calling the name Jesus. Because it's not about the calling. It's about I stand in the authority. Glory to God. So, John begins to say something very powerful here. And he says this in a very powerful way. He says, your joy cannot be full except you have experienced and said prayers. This is what it says in verse 24. Hitherto you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be full. What he's saying here is this, that your joy cannot be full. And let me say something to you here. Please everybody pay attention. Everyone needs one experience that is more than Bible that tells you that God is real. I'm telling you. And if you have not had it, you need to fight for it. The reason why is that Satan will never want to have it because he wants to always put that God can do in a mental accent. You must have it. You must be. So the reason why is that when the shifts are down and it seems as if you are trying to understand God's word, you can go back and say, no, uh -uh, God did this. Uh, God did this. That was what most... See, let me tell you something. This is very powerful. When Israel was leaving Egypt, God told them, he said, this, when you left Jordan, he said, the stones they use, he said, pick it up. Why? So that you will have something to go back to continually and say, God did this. 
The same thing happened to David. When David faced Goliath and everybody was scared. He said the same God that did the beer. The same God that did this will also do this one. The question is that do you have a track record of what God has done? I will never forget we had our second son and we began to notice problem with his speech. And my wife thought I did not notice because he would, he would be talking but he's speaking. His speech just was just not clear. And, 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 my wife, you know, and my wife thought I didn't notice. He said, See, have you noticed this? I said, I have. He said, what have you done? I said, it'll be okay. And the reason why is that from the day I noticed, I told myself, the Bible says, the seed of the righteous shall be blessed. And I began to take that thing. I mean, today it's a talkative. Of course, until amongst our three children, he talks the most. But the reason why that's important, the reason, because when I go through something else, I can say, God, you did this. The reason why it's difficult for you to trust God is that there's no, there's no Ebenezer rock you have built that you can always go back to and say, God, do this. Glory to God. And there's a level of joy you will not be able to enter into until you have the full assurance that God heard my prayer. Glory to God. Philippians chapter 1 verse 19. Philippians chapter 1 in verse 19. And this is how this works. I have a long way to go. It says in Philippians 1 verse 19, For I know that this shall turn to my salvation. He says, I know that this shall turn to my salvation. I heard what the doctor said about my blood fallopian tube. But I know that this will turn into my salvation concerning my fallopian tube. I heard what they said about my autistic child. But I know that this will turn. When it says it will turn to my salvation, means it will turn to my testimony. I heard what they said about the business and how I lost 100 million in the first six months. He said, but it shall turn. The thing is that with God, it's never final until God says so. Let me say this quickly here. One lady in our church lost her pregnancy and came to see me. And she broke down. If you say, I've been trying to get pregnant because the pregnancy was a miracle for nine years. She eventually got pregnant. And she came to see me. She broke down. I said, can I lose a baby? I allowed her cry. I looked her in the face because sometimes when you want to save faith, you have to help the emotion pass. I said, look her in the face. I said, there's nothing God has done he can't do again. And the reason I'm saying this year is that some of you have a testimony that went wrong. There's nothing that God has done he can't do again. And let me help you balance it. There's nothing Satan has done that God cannot undo. <laughs> Calm down. I know you had the miscarriage, but there's nothing God has done that what? He can't do again. I know you lost the money in business, but there's nothing Satan has done that God cannot undo. As a matter of fact, if you read Genesis, I think chapter 4, chapter four the Bible says that, and um, the Bible says that, and Eve had another child and called him Seth. Paraphrase, for God did it again. That's what Eve said, because she had lost Abel, and she said, and God did it again. Oh, this relationship was it's meant to lead to marriage, and you lost it. There's nothing God has done, he can't do again. Glory to God. So back to verse 19. The Bible says, for I know that this shall turn to your salvation through your prayers. So how does it turn to salvation? That business that's not working well, how do we turn it around? That marriage that's about to collapse, how do we turn it around? That finances that is going down, how do we turn it around? That cancer medical report, how do we turn it around? He said, it will turn around through your prayers. He's not going to turn around because we come to church. He's not going to turn around because you know me. He's going to turn around because there will be people that will hold on to the horns of the altar. There will be people that will lay hold on the altar of mercy and prevail in prayer for a total change. He says, how will it turn around? He says, I know this will turn around. How will it turn around? Through prayers. And prayers will cause a supply of the Spirit. In answer to prayers, God now sends a supply of the Spirit. Glory to God. Second Kings chapter 19.
2 Kings. Chapter 19. Verse 10. Hmm. Thus saith the Lord, thus shall ye say unto the Ezekiah, the king of Judah. Judah was under military attack. So they sent a message. You know, um, the, the, the king that was attacking them sent a message. He said, thus shall ye say unto Ezekiah, the king of Judah. Let not the God in whom you trust deceive thee, saying that Jerusalem shall not be delivered into the king of Assyria. This was the king of Assyria's talking. He said, Behold, as thou heard what the king of Assyria has done to all the lands by destroying them uttering, shall thou be delivered? Have the gods of the nation delivered deliver them when my father have destroyed as Gosan, as Haran, as Rephren, as the children of Israel, which were in Telassus, where is the king of Hamath? Where is the king of Apad? Where is the king of Sepharim and of Hena and of Havah? The Bible says in verse 14, And Ezekiel received the letter of the messengers and read it. And what did he do? And he went to him and got depressed. Yes or no? What did he do? The Bible says he read it and straight went to the house of the Lord. There are some medical reports you get, you just come to your elevation straight. There are some financial reports you get, you just come straight. You don't even, you don't even say, honey, something happened, you just come straight. You, because you need, see, before you talk to anybody, talk to God. You are putting too much pressure on men. Put the pressure in prayer. When you put pressure, listen, the thing about men is this. When men helps you, most men will brag about it. Most men will say, I can, you know, if not for me. And when men help you, if they give you a ladder, they can remove the ladder. But when God helps you, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. The help is sustained because the works of God are forever. The Bible says he got it and he just went straight. He didn't say, let's have a strategy meeting. The problem with Christians is this. This is a problem. We want to start in the flesh and perfect it in the spirit. That's the wrong order. Error. You start it in the spirit, then do flesh after. What does that mean? When you have gotten the letter, you go, blanga tola bragade, bragadikos ah. You will put the letter here. At night, you will be marching. The walls of Jericho fell down flat. The walls of Jericho fell down flat. The, this cancer, as the children of God were praising the Lord, the walls of Jericho fell down flat. Once you are done, you now go back and say, Doctor, what can we do? The reason why is that you are paralyzed with spiritual power. Now the medical things can work. What happened? We want to do medical first and now put the power on top. Is when you have gone for the meeting, you now come back and pray. No. Before you go for the meeting, lock yourself in the toilet. Banto salia. Kelito parodos, kira prakade. See, the, the way you are praying, the person that wants to remove you will instantly just gets a call from the MD. Please report, MD wants to see you. Before they come back, interview is concluded. Praise God. I say, Praise God. I say, Praise God. Brothers and sisters, let's remember we're spiritual. That's the challenge. That's the challenge with. With secularism, we forget that we are people of the spirits. Our, our dimension is the realm of the spirits. We can wear jeans, we can wear sneakers. You know, the real, the real spiritual people is not about how we look. It's in the spirit because the kingdom is now within us. But the thing is that we want to look after the flesh. They say, ah, you're not married. It's the God of the way you dress. When you be just like an old mama, open your boobs more. Wear micro skirt. If you start doing that and start doing like this, people will come. They say, thank you. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. <laughs> they, they, they are mighty true God. So the pulling down strongholds. You, you will say, I've heard you. You will say, I've heard you. I've heard you. That's your advice? I've heard. That should be opening my breast to find husband. I've heard. But I know <laughs> that he that watches over Israel never sleeps or slumber. He said, I will lift up my eyes unto the hill. Where cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord who has made the heavens and the earth. This way you will call for capital for your business to come. Praise God. I said, praise God. Was that too fast? All right. 
It said, and Ezekiah received the letter of the messengers and read it. And he went up into the house of the Lord and he spread it before the Lord. Very powerful. Very powerful. Let's go to verse 32 because of time. Verse 32 because of time. Oh, wow. <laughs> and let me tell you something. This is the power of revelation that Pastor Godman was talking about. One of the things you will leave from this meeting is revelation. The reason why is that the feelings will go away, revelations will stay. Revelations will stay. As soon, and this is the work, and this is what happens when you really pray. Learn to pray about issues and wait until a word or a scripture is kindled in your spirits. It's kindled. That's when you know that you have a response. I don't know how to explain it, but all of you that are used to prayer will understand this. You'll be praying, 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 praying. You will just hear, not by power, not by might. You, you don't even know why you're saying it all. You're saying, not by power, not by might. The reason why is that your spirit has laid hold on the Rema word. Your spirit has found something. And all of a sudden, you tell the thing, not by power, not by mind, not by power, not by mind. You're wondering, why am I saying not by power, not by mind? In your sense, there's nothing there, but the Spirit is responding. Glory to God. The Bible says, verse 32, Thus saith the Lord concerning the king of Assyria, He shall not come into the city, nor shoot an arrow, nor come before it, nor cast a bank against it. Verse 33, by the, by the way in which he came, the same he shall return. The same way the blood fallopian tube came that he didn't know how. The same way he shall return. Yeah. Hallelujah. The same way the delay came, the same way he shall return. He said, but the same way it came, but the same way it shall return. And it shall not come into what? This city. This is a classical example of how outcomes was changed. In fact, if you read the story, exactly what happened. He went back home and killed himself because he couldn't believe that the king of Judah overcame him. Because by the same way he came, the same way he returned. So we need to realize something that negative outcomes can always be reserved, reversed. And the reason why is that Mark chapter 9, 23, Mark eleven twenty three, 23, it says, with God all things are possible. Medically speaking, it might be impossible. Marriage might be impossible. But with God, he didn't say with man. He didn't say with Nigerian government. He didn't say if, you have, if you're in the banking sector or if you have an oil business. He didn't say that if you are in the UK, it's possible. He said with God, all things are possible. He said with God, all things are possible. Many of you are familiar with our ministry. But one of the stories I love to share when Pastor Gomez is around is this. I remember when our church just started and Pastor Gomez was giving a check of 50000 to give to me. That money, he misplaced the check. But I want to show you how 50000 was important to him. I visited him at least six times <laughs> to try to retrieve the check from him. But he had misplaced it. And he refused to tell me he had misplaced it. But the reason why was that 50000 was literally our monthly income as a ministry. So, whatever you see today, when I say with God, all things are possible. And from the things Pastor Goma shared, you could tell. With God, all things are possible. Maybe you come from one of the shanties. And when you come to Elevation Church, you see all the cars. You see all the Prado. You see the Lexus. You see the Rolls Royce. All those people smelling money. And you look at yourself. And that thought wants to fill your mind. Tell yourself, with God, all things are possible. Maybe as you come into church, you see your friend just hold their kids and say, Junior, going to junior school, and the junior church is saying, Oh, welcome. And you'll be like, We're classmates at university. Where's my own child? Am I even married? Remind yourself, with God, all things are possible. With man, it may be difficult. With man, it may be impossible. But with God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. You're looking for how to raise the money to start the business? With God, all things are possible. And you know I'm saying this? You need to think supernatural to have supernatural. One of the major challenges with Christians is that we, we become so civilized and we don't even think that the supernatural is possible. We think those are the things that happened in those days. With God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. Negative outcomes can always be re reversed. 
Lamentation chapter 3, verse 37. Lamentation, this is a very this is a verse I love. Lamentation chapter 3, verse 37. Can we read together one to go? Who is he that say it and it cometh to pass when the Lord commanded it not? Who said you will not marry when the Lord has not commanded it? Who said you will not have a child when the Lord has not commanded it? Who said that your business will not explode to become a global business when the Lord has not commanded it? He said, let God be true and all men liars. Let God be true and all men liars. So I always remind myself, the truth is that people that, you know, sometimes when I hear some people speak, I, I remind them, I say, thank you so much. I expect you to speak this way because you were trained. You went to school, right? You did training. You were trained to tell me this. But the thing is that who is it that say it when the Lord has not commanded it so? We have a superior report. We have a superior system. Faith does not deny the fact. Faith only superimposes on the fact. So the, the reality, the reality is that you don't have the money to start the business. That's the physical reality. But faith says that the Lord shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Faith says the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Praise God. I said, praise God. What does prayer do for you? Number one, it makes you joyful. Prayer makes you joyful. And I've explained that. Prayer makes you confident in God's ability. You know, <laughs> you know, sometimes when you travel on the plane and you try to preach, maybe when you're on the fly, maybe in the economy or business class, you come across an atheist, maybe someone that doesn't believe in God. And the person says, begins to give an opinion that, you know, the Bible is just another document and there are other writings. I'm like, well, I wish I, wish I could compare the Bible to the writing. He said, what's the proof? And I told them a story. I said, I said, at a point in my life, my nose vessel was broken. So my nose used to bring out blood just by itself. And um, the ENT, hair nose doctor, hair nose and throat doctor, I said the only way to repair it was to open up my nose. They would do a small... They would operate it and fix it back. And my mom wasn't born again at that time. And she said to me, she said, you always pray. Your own, this prayer cannot heal you. That was my challenge. That was my challenge. And that was many years ago. Maybe over 30 years ago till now. I've not had an operation. I've been totally healed by the power of God. You know what that does for me? There's a boost in my confidence. That's what prayer does. Actually, when you have answers, your joy will be full. There's a boost of your confidence. In fact, what, let me tell you, if you're very smart, you will transfer the confidence you have in one area of prayer to another area where you don't have confidence. You begin to say things like, if God did this for my business, it will also do it for my children. And let me say something to you. God is very kind. He will always leave you with a weakness. Hallelujah. The third thing prayer does for us is this. Prayer amplifies your spiritual sensitivity. You will notice in the Bible, the Bible says, and when they prayed, the Holy Ghost said, Acts chapter 10, as Peter was about to pray, he saw a vision. How come a lot of the spiritual coincidences of visions and visitation happen when they pray? Because there's something about prayer that amplifies your spiritual sensitivity. Listen to me. Someone says, I need God to, I need God to talk to me. God is already talking to you. You need to become more sensitive. That's the truth. No Christian has a problem hearing God. Every Christ, no Christian has a problem that God is speaking to him. Most Christians have a problem discerning what God is saying. Like Samuel. God was always speaking to Samuel. But Samuel did not know God was speaking to him. And the reason why is that he had not trained himself spiritually to be able to hear. Sometimes you now come back and say, and something told me. Was it something? It was the Holy Spirit but you had not trained yourself. You had not trained yourself. So prayer helps us to become more spiritually sensitive. Not too long, sometime last year, I got home and my wife was trying out this new chef to help us in the house. And um, my wife said, oh, yeah, I, I, just, I just walked into the kitchen to get a glass of water and I saw him. And I just said, I said, who is that? He said, oh, the chef, I'm trying to check him out. I said, he's demon-possessed. I said, how did you see that? I said, yeah, I can tell. I can tell. I said, I can fully see. I can tell from the, I can tell from the spirit that it's demon-possessed. 
Of course, he failed the interview. So I told my wife, you don't have to send him away, but you have to make a decision. You can decide to call him to help him by removing the demon from him because someone can be demon-possessed and be helpless. But the point is that, can you see what God is showing you or you are so blind? You are the same person that would date someone that is of a certain path. Why? All your spiritual senses not talk to you. You are the same person that will lose so much money in business. Where are your spiritual senses? The reason why is that you have not turned your spiritual senses to be alive. There's even trips. There are trips you want to take. And the whole, you will just feel the power go back. But those occurrences happen to a person that is spiritual and prays. The third thing that happens in prayer is this. Influence. Influence. Where my stuff? Influence. Just give me the last two on that. You can hold on to that one. Praise God. Influence. Someone say hallelujah. It's not magic. I don't have... Magical powers, just an illustration. How do you open this? Okay, found it. So, watch this now. These are all, yeah, this is good. Watch that. These are all nails. These are all nails. And these are magnets. When you pray, this is what happens to you. When you pray, you are creating influence of the spirits. You are creating what? Influence of the spirits. I want to ask you a question. Look at the story of Esther. Esther said, Mordecai told Esther, they're going to kill us. Let's pray. Esther said, we're going to pray. They began to pray. Next thing, the king could not sleep. What affected his sleep? Influence. Then the king says, let's turn, let's turn the king says, let's, let's turn, let's open the book that Saul is rewarded. That person was Mordecai. When you pray, this is how prayer works. Watch this one. This is a magnet. It's just a magnet. Watch. What should not come to you, you begin to attract. And they will wonder, why are you so lucky? It's not luck. Prayer creates that influence that brings you favor. So, if you're prayerful, once you walk like this, you just be picking up blessing, picking up marriage, picking up contract, picking up things. People are wondering, what's wrong with you? It's the influence of prayer. That was why, oh, glory to God. I said glory to God. Hey, watch this now. Genesis, the Bible says that <laughs> Jacob was coming home. And all of a sudden, as he was coming home, he said, go and see my brother. They say, your brother has come with 400 men to greet you. What does that thing, what do you think of? Is that a family visit or that's a military army? Esau was coming to kill him. He wanted to change the outcome. It's, it now started, he said, let's divide into three, let's divide into three. He knew it would not work. Because he knew that Esau was wicked. He knew he had offended. The Bible says, and Jacob was left alone. That's the problem. You can't do some kind of praying with everybody. The biggest prayer is not the one you do in church. The biggest prayer is the one you do by yourself. The Bible says, and Jacob was left alone. And Jacob, see, there's some, there, 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 there are some scriptures in the Bible that your head will just stand. He said, and Jacob was left alone. And they appeared to him an angel. And in a metaphoric way, because you need to understand the metaphor. The Bible says he wrestled with the angel. You, don't, you, you can't really wrestle with an angel. It's a metaphor. He, he was saying that there was, there, was, there was an engagement. There was an engagement. And, and, and Jacob knew if something does not, take, does not happen in the realm of the spirit, I'm done for. He knew that if something does not happen in the realm of the spirit, hey, he saw will wipe me out. And he held on to him. Hey, Makushaya. And he, the Bible says, and he wrestled. And he wrestled. And he wrestled to daybreak. And the angel said, 
I want to go. And Jacob said, go where? Go where? I said, my business must move. <laughs> I said, things must accelerate. I said, I must get married. <laughs> we must start the other branch. The angel said, okay, now that you have said so. He said, he said, I will not let you go except you bless me. Guess what the next thing the angel said? The angel said a powerful word. He said, as a prince, was the father a king? Prayer changes status. Monkaya. Prayer changed the style. He said, as a prince. The name changed. He said, as a prince. Singles that want to get married, change your name in the spirit from single to married. Let's see if you don't get married in physical. All of you that run businesses, change your name from towns or near business to millions in dollars in the spirit. Let's see if you don't come in the physical. The reason why is that once you have the magnet, it will attract. He said, as a prince, thou hast prevailed. Prevailed? Prevailed where? He said, you have made advancement as a prince. Praise God. The things you want to see are possible. They are. So someone says to me, but I've been praying, praying, praying. What's my second? Yeah. I've been praying, 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 praying. I've been praying, 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 praying. So I brought this for you. Um, you can bring it out. I didn't get something else to bring. What is this? Indomie. What is this? So I say, I've been praying, praying, praying. My friend only prayed two days or one month or three years. She got the thing. I've been praying, praying, praying. The thing is that you don't know what you are praying about. Some of you, what you are praying about is an indomie problem. Five minutes cooking is done. Some of you, your problem is beans. His beans. We have to parboil. We have so you think the prayer is not working because you are measuring your time with somebody else's time, but the prayer is working, but the subject of your prayer is different. So you are comparing yourself to someone that is cooking spaghetti. Meanwhile, you are cooking beans. But the way beans will feel, spaghetti cannot feel that way. Question is that what are you cooking? What are you cooking? So, so before you know it, I, you know, uh, Pastor Bola, I've been, you know, uh, Pastor Bola, I, I'm tired though. I'm tired though. They said this year, this year, this year. It's now July. Brother, you're cooking beans. Face your beans. You are still in par boiling stage. You are still what? In par boiling stage. I'm telling you, you are still in par boiling stage. I know this as a pastor. How do I know this? You talk to some people and you can tell where their faith is as you speak with them. You can tell, you can tell where their mentality is as you speak to them. You can tell, wow, wow. I can tell this is going to be, for example, a lady, there was one lady that had a relative that had cancer and she was trying to get me to pray. I spoke to her once, then I pulled back. So they put pressure on my wife and, you know, like, why is Pastor Balaji not trying to pray for us? And the reason why is that the way their mind was, I could not see them having a miracle except there was a special gift of the Spirit that can happen without them. And that happens sometimes. Some of you, before you pray, you have to parboil. Your mindset must be parboiled. And thank God you attend a great church that teaches on teaching that fixes the mindset. Because they've told you, they've told you all these things from home, you believe all these things from places, about your life, about your future, about things like that, and you have to parboil. And say, you know, See, don't be in a hurry to pray. The reason why is that if your mindset is negative, your prayer will not work. You know why? Anything that is negative times negative doesn't work. So, anything that is negative, whatever I multiply, doesn't work, work. So, if your mindset is negative, your prayer will be negative and bring about negative results. Praise God. I say praise God. I say praise God. I say praise God. So, prayer increases influence. All of a sudden, the end of the bank you're talking to calls you. All of a sudden, this happens all the time. I, I would sometimes share with my brother, Pastor Godman, you know, we were sitting together in the, we were sitting together in the meeting and we needed some money to do something. And someone just sent some money. And, and you know the thing? It's one thing if you ask someone or ask the church for money. And when I say money, I'm not talking about 100 million. I'm talking about 
volumes of money, more than 100 million. It's another thing where someone said, I heard you are doing this. And because of that, not that you spoke to them, I want to support. I heard. One of my brothers was sharing with me the other day. He, he had a need for money for a project. He went for a birthday party. As he sat down there, they were talking, and his friend introduced somebody else and said, oh, he's doing this project. You know, he needs a lot of help, you know, and they were just talking. And as he was going, someone said, you know, you, you're a young guy. You need a lot of help. He said, would $30,000 help you? He said, like, joke. He said, Monday morning. He said, the next day, it was the party was on Sunday evening. He said, the next day, the driver came and bought $30,000. He said, ha, influence of the spirit. Influence. Uh, there was a testimony that we we're sharing on Next Level. This guy says, my husband is married. We married, I think they're married in June. This June, yeah, they're married in June. He said, but what touched me the most is that we've known each other from, from 2010. He said, he never asked me for marriage. He said, the, he said, the breakthrough started. One day you read a scripture from Isaiah. And the scripture is this. Because some of you, the scripture is this. That God will remove the face of the, um, the covering cast. The covering cast. The covering cast is um, the covering cast is a spiritual principle. It's used both in the negative and the positive. The covering cast is a principle where people will not discern you. They will see something that's when they see you. It's the principle of favor also. Because in favor, what God does is that it makes you overestimated. It makes you preferred. So, they are under an influence. But it's also negative because you can be diminished. So, the Bible says that the covering cast, Isaiah 36, right? Okay, look at it. Uh, it's, it's, let, let's just look at that. It says, he will destroy in this mountain the face. It's a, it's a face. The face of the covering cast over all the people and the veil that is spread over the nation. Some of you, the reason why I know mind that they can't see in the name of the Spirit, in the name of the Spirit, you're a man. Your business with all the signboard cannot be seen because of what? The face of the covering cast. There's a covering cast. So you wonder, why is he not talking? They can't see you. They only say, they will friend zone you. They will pass your business, move to the next person. Covering cast. Because you have been covered. In the spirit, they have one garment for you. Praise God. So this lady, I mean, she joined the prayer we prayed. And the guy came back and said, the guy just came back last year and said, I would like to marry you. And they got married. And they, they get married in June. Then the touching part, the lady said, what have you waited for all this while? He said, the first thought to marry you occurred to me 2019. He said, but what kept me for three years that I could not ask, for four years I could not ask you? He said, I don't know how. He said, but the month I asked you, something just pinched me to ask you. That was the month we paid the prayer. The covering cast was removed. Gives it. Um, you know, I'm not a prayer person, you know. <laughs> you know. You know, the thing is that me and God have a thing going. You know, me and God have a thing going. <laughs> if someone says, I'm not a prayer person, you have no follow who make you pray. When you find what will make you pray, you'll be surprised how much you can be a prayer warrior. I lift my hands. You've never been, oh, our, our ecclesiastical father, we just adore you like you're majestic. For, literally, there is nothing like you because you're just awesome. You know, Lord, you get, you get me, Lord? <laughs> True prayer is not what to. True prayer. You, they, they, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You get to a point, you speak your vernacular. Have you heard that before? <laughs> you get to a point, you say, Baba. <laughs> All the prayer your mother used to pray, they will come back at an instant. Praise God. So, prayer, influence, influence. So, what happened to, Le what happened to Jacob? And Esau, as soon as Esau was done praying, he said, let's go. By the time he met Esau, everything had changed. 
favor had covered him. It's a come. No longer the angry Esau. This was now a different Esau. Different Esau. Influence of prayer. Influence of prayer. And I, I said, learning this in a very small way. When our church was very tiny, I mean, we we're talking about it. So we're, t- we're just about 100. One man drove by. He said, I saw in a vision that should give you money. I don't come to this church. He, he, in fact, he said, you go and call the pastor for him. He was a, I mean, I mean, probably had cars in, our, cars in our house, in our church. Very few. He said, I don't know why. And they brought out a check. And he said, our rent is due. That's why. Thank you. The influence of prayer. Influence of prayer. When our church was young, we were trying to raise money for flyers. It was a 21-year-old girl that gave me 150 pounds. He said, I'm going for vacation. My, my parents give me money, but I feel I should take part of the money and support the church. It's not in the size of the money because I can give you bigger testimonies. I'm just saying that those things built that confidence in me. And that confidence helps today. Praise God. I said, praise God. I said, praise God. Let's begin to close. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. Three dimensions in prayer. I just want to touch on this. I want to touch about some aspects of prayer. We've spoken about some aspects of prayer. Matthew 7, 7. The Bible says, ask and you should receive. When we read these places, people don't understand what it's asking. They just, people have different perspectives. It's telling us that, number one, ask. That ask is, is prayers. It's like petition. It's a level of petition. It's a dimension. Ask. But that's not what prayer is. Unfortunately, people, you know, there's this new movement that says, forget yourself. Just forget yourself. Think of what you do for God. I think it's not balance. I think the way God does it is that he knows you're a child. So what he does is that when you first come to him, he's interested in meeting your needs. But that's the first stage and not the last stage. The problem is this. If you are so committed to God and you don't go through this channel where you know God can take care of you, your spirituality will frustrate you at some end. I mean, it's not true. Don't we have friends that stop coming to church because of answer prayers? So what, there's a dimension of prayer. It says, ask and you shall receive. And that's where we start from. When we begin to build, begin to build. And when you have a child, I hope you know that when you have a new child, the child is just interested in asking. So God knows our stage. But it doesn't leave us there. He goes to what? Seek. Where's the guy on the keyboard? He just went away. You know, it's a seek. It's a seek. What is seek? Seek is prayer of fellowship. A time comes in your, in, your, in your Christian life. The prayer is no longer, give me, do this, give me. It's not like, oh Lord, you are my dwelling place. You'll always fill my heart with songs of deliverance. Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. I will trust in you. I declare that I am strong in the strength of the Lord. And as the deer panted for the water, so my soul. At this second level of prayer, I'm, I'm not asking for anything. I'm just saying I'm asking for you, Lord. It's you. It's you. That, that I may be filled with the knowledge of his will. He now wished up an understanding. That's my desire. Amen. You know, recently someone said on social media, well, I don't pray again. I don't pray again. I, I don't pray again. And he said, the reason why is that everything I pray about, I get it without prayer. And I said, the person was poorly taught. To think that the core reason of prayer is to ask for things. No, sir. Fellowship. Hey, and you are Lord. Ha. You are Lord, Lord. You are Lord. You are Oh, yes. In this kind of prayer, it's not about house. It's about him. 
Before you know it, tears start coming down your eyes. So I'm saying, I, I don't cry in prayer. I feel bad for you. You've not cried before in worship. You don't know what it means to be lost. And tears fill the whole of your eyes. And all of a sudden, the world becomes so small and God becomes so big. And you are in awe of His presence. You are in awe of His glory. You are in awe of Him, totally blown away by His presence. Where did we start from? We started from ask and seek a dimension of prayer. But don't stay there. Then seek and you shall find. Then the third dimension, knock. And knock is when you use your prayer to, for dominion. When your prayer is used for dominion, you can open things and open for people. That kind of level, you turn loose a city in prayer. You will come to a city and say, I've come to Birmingham in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. All the principalities take off. That's one category of prayer. Ask, seek, knock. There's another level in prayer called travail. In Isaiah chapter 66 verse 7. Travail. 66 verse 7. See what the Bible says. Can you read verse 6? Go to verse 6 first. Oh, verse 6. Verse 7 is okay. Let, let, let me start from verse 7. Verse 7 and verse 8. Let me read verse 8, then I'll go to verse 7. He said, Who has heard such a thing? Who has seen such a thing? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Ah! Or shall the nations be born at once? For as soon as Zion traveled, she brought forth. Hey! What you've been waiting for for 10 years. He said, in one day. In one day. In one day. Why? As soon as Zion traveled, she brought forth. This kind of prayer is not the kind of prayer I say, I bind, I lose. Oh, man, gen, 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 gen. No. This kind of prayer you take off your shoes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Because we want to travel. He said, as soon as Zion travel, this prayer, there are things we want to birth. There are things we want to move. There are orchestrations we want to create by the Spirit. As soon as Zion travel, oh, sometimes those kind of travel, you pray and pray and pray and words are gone. You're saying, no, no. What is on? The groanings of the spirits. He's a travail in the spirits. But as you do that, things have been remodeled in the spirit realm. Shift is taking place in the spirit realm. That's a problem. Business people, you don't belong to a secret plot cult, yet you don't belong to a secret place. Belong somewhere. You didn't hear me, business people. Secret plot, you don't belong. Secret place, you don't belong. Stay somewhere. Before they come for a meeting, they will leak something and come and talk. You know, I say, I don't know, as soon as he spoke to the governor. I mean, one, 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 one came, came that should pray for one governor. He said, there's a man that comes to see the governor. I never mentioned the name of the governor. I said, one governor. You know, he said, he said as soon as he talks to the governor, whatever we have planned before is changed. He said, the governor will allude to him no matter what. He said, we know that it's, it puts the governor down influence. I told him, I said, you uncle, you don't have influence. Because you don't, you, you don't, you see, your tongue does not touch on before you come out. Let your tongue start touching something. Let it touch heaven. Praise God. Travel. You just look at a man, he just totally, a young girl comes to the picture, I want to take the man away from the marriage. Take your sister away from my marriage. You will call her. In Kechi, don't worry. Don't worry. We'll meet at midnight. When you wake up, Blagadika Brangada, Makos Kapale Gadua. See, the man himself will use his leg and come back home. The reason why he said, as soon as Zion travel, brother, can you travel? 
I know you can speak phonetics, but can you travel? When last did you came? See, you've spoken to everybody about your financial problem. Have you prayed? All the prayer. Mm, you know, I don't know why people don't want to help me. This is a nice proposal. This thing works. This country is so messed up. I don't know why things are so hard in Nigeria. Things are so hard in Nigeria because, you know, if I was in the UK, go to the UK. <laughs> now you are here. Even in the UK, things are tough. Keep talking. Talk less to man. Talk more to God. As soon as Zion travel. Praise God. I said praise God. I said praise God. So much to say. Let me, let me round off. How do you become prayerful? Maybe three points. The first thing, strong desire. Don't give an excuse. Don't say, you know, you know I'm not a prayer person. Pray, being prayerful can be learned. The reason why is that Luke 18, the apostles said, teach us to pray. They learned it. There was a time they couldn't pray. Learn, teach yourself to pray. So strong desire to learn. Then the second thing is that if you want to learn how to pray, you know, if you want to learn how to pray, how, how do you trigger yourself? I want to tell you what I do to trigger yourself. Simple things that can trigger you. Good songs. They, they are songs, like that song, that, that song we just sang. They, they are even songs I have for different occasions. Because some different songs provoke different reactions. There's a song that I want to feel in love with God, but it's a song that when I want to move things. Baba Fagba Rario. Baba Fagba. Who can battle with my God? Who <laughs> can battle with my God? See, those are songs that as you begin to sing, the power begins to rise from your feet. So the, the doctor said, hey, madam, the fallopian tube is blocked. Well, there's someone on my right hand side. I see on your head, I see two disappointments. There were two things we went for you on this side. There were two things we went for and you were denied twice. This is what the Lord is saying. The next time you go, it will be approved for you. Praise God. Who can battle with my God? Who can battle with... You have competitors in business. CBN said this. NPPD said this. SPD said this. HIV said this. Mm -hmm. Who can battle with my God? Who can... Home office said this. Uh, Australian Embassy said this. Uh, you green card says this. Who can battle with my God? Who can battle with my God? Who can battle with my God? By the time you begin to sing that way, and you sing meaningfully, let, let your mind see when you sing, don't just sing it. Who can battle with my God? and be dancing? That's not the time to be dancing, anyhow. You want your mind to be focused on the words, you want to use your mind to direct your emotions. You begin to think about the power, the greatness of God. Oh, gabash, as you're singing that song, you begin to think of Pharaoh. Think of the prophet of Bar. Think of Jordan. What our God did. How we showed his power. How we showed his goodness. Uh, what, what's happening to you that you're already vibrating? The reason why you're, all of a sudden your faith is rising. Guess what? How do you pray? You program yourself with the songs. You program yourself with the songs. That's the first way. And the last one is this. I didn't give you everything. Scriptures. There are scriptures that shout. Ezra chapter 8 verse 21. Ezra chapter 8 verse 21. This is my prayer time, right? Pastor, this is a prayer time, right? This is a prayer time. Okay. We're already there. Because I have 10, 5 minutes extra. Yeah, thank you. I want to be sure because, because I saw the time. I know I have one hour and ten minutes. I want to be sure. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Right? Okay. Then I proclaim a fast that at the river of Havana, we may afflict ourselves to the Lord and seek of him a right way for us. Businessmen, just take note of that scripture. Just use it. Just, just a right way. A right way for partnership. Don't partner with evil spirits. 
and for our little substances. Verse 22. Keep going, keep going. The verse 22. Let's read together. I want to go. For I was ashamed to require of a king a band of soldiers and a horseman to help us against the enemy in the way. Why? Why? He was ashamed to ask for help. Why? Was it because he was proud? Let's look at the next line. Because, no, 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 go back. Because we have spoken unto the king, saying, The hand of the Lord is upon all them for good that seek him. His power and his wrath is against all them that forsake him. You know what it was saying? He said, we can't go back and ask the king because we are bragged. So, there's a prayer point from there. Let my brag in God become reality. You know, some of you, you've told, you've told your friends, I said I will marry you. That brag must become reality. You've, you've, you've told them, when they said, if I don't sleep with you, you'll be far there. You say, sir, I will leave you and do well. You bragged. You know what Ezra was saying? He said, we can't go back and meet the king for help. We are bragged. Let our brag in God become reality. You told the doctor that, don't worry, even with the five, but I will carry a baby. You will go back with that baby. Oh. That same doctor will take delivery. Amen. One, one lady was sharing in our church. This is a big testimony. It's a, it's a problem in, in Premier Hospital. Because this lady in our church, they took out the fallopian, um, the fallopian tubes. We prayed. There was a word of knowledge. They took it about five years ago. She went back last year. And the fallopian tubes were back. Hold on. The doctor said, they didn't take out your fallopian tube. The lady said, let me open for you. Opened. He said, this is this, this where they cut. The doctor said, well, that's not enough. They could cut and not take it out. He said, but the hospital is still here. Go to the hospital, got the medical report. He said, this is a report. What is on that report? Fallopian tube don't grow back. What happened? The power. Who can battle with my God? Stand on your feet. Hallelujah. The first prayer is simple. Let my bragging God become reality. Let's go ahead and pray, everybody. Let's go ahead and pray. Let's go ahead and pray. Let's go ahead and pray. Let's, let our bragging God become reality. Oh, Rabaka Shata Lama Legadia. Let Kota Mokolo Celebrum take Alabatena Mokoravia. Celebrum take so 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 Pekoshe polo poro 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 de kaparande kaya barati selebedia chele kosi pole ke sonte le polo konta haya liko robo shate le ke rebata ya hebronga pa ha rake pa ya kat hebrote para hebrone ma rende ke le ronte imanang ronta hebroko tolo robo ko imrende pora hexi ke brango hasso broko pa ya hexo broko hetele brike chele bronte ke reba imo ka broka ka 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 na hexa boladia. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. All of you in peace, go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Let's see the Montali Gariatos. Go ahead and pray. The scripture cannot be broken. Soaring on eagle's wings. My God, my God. All of you in the viewing centers. All of you online. Go ahead and pray. My God, my God. Jesus. Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. We have a, another session in the evening, so we can leave a lot to the evening. But in this morning session, can I just pray for those that have sick in their bodies, maybe you have a pain, medical re reports, all those kind of things. Anybody like that here? Just resolve. You don't have to come outside, you know. That's fine. Praise God. Praise God. As we pray, it's very simple. You will be healed. Someone says, how will you be healed? Because God is a constant. He's faithful. He's kind. 
He's faithful, he's kind. The question is that, do you just want to say, okay, well, you know, well, let, let me raise up my hands. You know, no, 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 no. Receive your healing. And as we pray, I'm going to pray. I'm going to ask you to do what you could not do before. And you're going to do it seven times. And by the seventh time, it will be totally gone. Yeah. Praise God. Thank you, Father. And right now, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And right now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, thank you, Lord. Thou spirit of sickness, infirmity, that stayed in their body, either they are in this auditorium or they are watching online or the other centers. You spirits of infirmity that have caused them not to have a child, that have caused the back problem, that's caused the lump. Thou spirit of infirmity, loose them now. I command your foul spirit out of their bodies in the name of Jesus. Come out of their body right now. I command the arthritis to go. I command the fiber to go. I command that blood fallopian tube to be opened. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I command it to be opened. In the name of the Lord Jesus. That child that can't talk, I command his tongue to be loose. In the name of the Lord Jesus. That back problem you have, I command it to go in Jesus' name. And right now, from the crown of your feet, from, from, the, from the sole of your feet, upward, let the healing power of God walk in your body. Let the healing power of God walk in your body. Let the healing power of God walk in your body. Amen. Amen. Do what you cannot do before seven times. All of you that raised up your hands. That's my instruction to you. Do what you cannot do before seven times. Seven times. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You know, everybody has gifts. Pastor Godman, many, many gifts. But, but this one is my own gift. I was given from heaven. To pray for the sick and see them. I was given. Pastor Godman knew me even as a student in university. So either when you say deaf ear, this or this, it's been since I was in the university. The first time I prayed for someone to be healed, I was in year five in the secondary school. So this is my gift. You don't have to, there's no problem. Just do what I said. Is that okay? Do what you cannot do before seven times. Yeah. Yeah, just do it. Who can battle with my God? Who can battle with my God? Who can battle with the Lord? Say nobody. Who can battle with the seven times? How many of you, when we prayed, you felt the pain go, you felt the relief in your body, raise up your right hands, just raise it up, raise it up, one, uh, two, I don't want to count three, we don't have the time, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, any other person at the back, ten, eleven, there'll be more opportunity for a testimony, twelve, thank you, what happened to you? You had the pain on your shoulder and disappeared, what happened to you, man? Your knee got healed. And look at that. She's breaking out in tears and just crying right there. Glory to God. I say hallelujah. Let me tell you why I love to pray for the sick. Number one, because people are in pain. Number two, it shows the love of Christ. But number three, it shows what God can do even when we're not here. Some things cannot happen here. Like maybe about your business right here. But as we pray, the same thing can happen. We're going to have a powerful evening. God bless you. Amen.